I invite the congregation to please stand. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death and have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged, for I have redeemed you from the house of bondage and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death, O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word, and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, Holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, what more could have, done, could have been done for my vineyard that I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God, O my people? Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. O oh Lord, have mercy.
congregation may be seated. Everything you need for this evening for your service is printed there in your worship bulletin. There are some in the back if you need one to follow along. Just a few things to bring to your attention uh, before we get into our service, the, the seven words from the cross. There are a few things that, that I want you to know. At the end of the service, we will be ending in darkness. So as you leave, um, you will be ending in darkness and silence. So we'll sing the final verse of Abide With Me. After that, the candle will be brought in, and then you can leave uh, in darkness and in silence. Um, with that, we will be singing the final verse of Abide With Me with the lights out. So it will be a bit challenging to see the words. If you're familiar with the words, sing along, join along with us. If not, listen along as we sing that final verse. Our plan was to have a soloist. Unfortunately, she got sick, so she was unable to do it tonight. So we'll join along as a congregation and do it to the best of our ability. With that, let's join together in the first verse of Abide With Me. We'll sing one verse before we see each word from the cross here this evening. God's blessings as you worship your crucified Savior. Jesus' first words from the cross. It was the day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The church responds, We praise you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your cross and precious death, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Almighty God, your dear Son, our Lord, did not go up to joy before he suffered pain. He did not enter into glory before he was crucified. I mercifully grant that we in faith may walk the way of his cross and find in it the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing our next hymn.
we sing the second verse of Abide With Me. Savior's second word from the cross. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. The church responds, we praise you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your cross and precious death, you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried all our sorrows. Lord Jesus, while you hung on the cross, you showed mercy to the dying thief. With that mercy, look on us also, we pray. And at our last hour, comfort us with your promise that we will dwell forever in paradise with you. Amen. We sing our next hymn.
Savior's third word from the cross. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The church responds, We praise you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your cross and precious death, you have redeemed the world. Bind us to each other with bonds of charity and love, that we ever may reflect the great and sacrificial love that you have shown to us through your suffering, pain, and death on the cross. Lord Jesus, even as you carried the weight of the sins of the world on your shoulders, your concern was for others. With the same concern you showed to your mother, show concern for us, your sorrowful children. Amen. We sing the next hymn. Your Savior's fourth word from the cross. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. The church responds, we praise you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your cross and precious death, you have redeemed the world. Keep us mindful of your abiding presence with us, that our witness to the love you have shown us may never falter or fail. Grant, we pray, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace. Cleanse us from all our sins, so that we may serve you with a quiet mind. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our next hymn. Fifth word from the cross. Jesus told his disciples, Anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me, the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. 
later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. The church responds, We praise you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your cross and precious death, you have redeemed the world. Grant us peace and patience under all trials. Keep us mindful of the great sacrifice you willingly made for us to pay the price for our sins. We sing our next hymn. Our Savior's sixth word from the cross, and we'll meditate on this word a bit this evening. When he had received the drink, 
Jesus said, it is finished. We bow our heads and we pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. With a mouth that, that was so dry that it felt like a piece of pottery that, that was about to shatter, uh, that was stuck to, to the roof of his mouth, how could he even speak? I mean, he, he hardly could, yet he showed himself to, to have quite a voice later, but, but willingly he humiliated himself in front of all those who were, were ready to, to, to put him to death, were ready for his life to, to come to an end, and, and, and he asked for a drink. He asked for a drink so that, yes, he could fulfill Scripture but also so that he, he could cry out a few more words from the cross. And what, what were those words that were so important that, that he needed a nice wet palate so that he could cry it out with a loud voice for, for many to hear, so that he could proclaim them boldly? Well, they were words for you and I again to marvel at the mercy that our God had on us. They were words that, that Jesus cried out from the cross, not for his own good, not for the, the good of God the Father, but for you and for those people who were standing there observing what was happening that day. Jesus cloaked in his human nature, being a true human being, is experiencing a death of torment, a death of shame, a pain like, like no other at that time physically, and an agony unrivaled mentally to, to anything else that, that someone could have faced as people watched him take his final breath, as people were there mocking and shaming him. And this was a death that this Savior, he could only die for, for you and me if he himself willingly brought himself from heaven to die. And there he was. There he was upon that cross. And with a loud voice, still strong, even at the point of death, he cries out, it is finished. Sure, we can look at this from an earthly sense of things. It is finished. His life is about to come to an end. From his human nature, his work on this earth, it has been finished. Everyone observing that, that what was happening that day knew that the son of Mary soon would be dead. That, that was an obvious outcome of what they were observing. Son of man and son of God, this cry was much more than, than just a simple realization that, that his time on this earth was coming to an end. As with many words that, that Jesus proclaimed from the cross, this was yet another sermon. This was yet another way to teach his people. This was a cry for, for you and a cry for me, a, a cry for every believer in the history of time, those, those, those Old Testament believers who had been waiting for this moment that the Lamb of God would go and be that perfect sacrifice on the cross. It was a cry for, for the New Testament believers, for you and me, uh, that, that proclaimed that this was the Son of God. It is finished. A verdict from your God that everything has been completed. But what? What is finished? Not just his life here on this earth, but his purpose for life. Here it is. It's here at the cross where, where we see God's perfect justice and God's perfect mercy meet. It's here at the cross where we see God's plan of salvation for all people, for you and for me. It is finished. This is it, the, the promise of a Savior who is going to come and crush the head of the devil. Here it is, fulfilled. It is 
finished. The one who would bear my, my punishment for sin and heal my wounds, it is finished. Everything that, that God the Father willed, it's, it's completed up there on the cross, beaten, bloodied, wounded. There was our Jesus, and what does he do? He proclaims a victory cry for you. But as we sit back and we think about the weight of everything that Jesus was carrying there on that cross, it almost knocks us to our knees in sorrow. It almost knocks us to our knees in sadness. And at the sound of these words, we almost want to sink our hands into our palms because as I look at the cross, I see the horror of my sin. Don't you see what the law demanded? The law demanded perfection. And I'm far from that. My wretched sin... My disobedience to God that, that leads me to feel all sorts of shame and guilt. It's what led this Savior to be crushed. If I ever think of sin but lightly, here we, we look at the cross and we look into the face of anguish that each one of my misdeeds caused. And so what do I do? What do I do as I hear this cry? What do I do as I look at the face of my Savior? Should I run from Jesus because I see the pain that I have caused him? No. As I bury my, my hands in my palms at the sight of such agony, at the sight of such pain, my Savior cries out, it is finished. And with that cry, I once filled with shame, once filled with sorrow, I look up and I see that Savior there on that cross who perfectly, who completely carried out the will of God the Father for me. As I look up from, from tear-filled palms and I see upon that cross the love that is behind those words, it is finished. My penalty that was due to me for, for my sin, the, the penalty that has been hanging over my head is paid for. It is finished. The devil's chains that, that held me captive to, to shame and guilt have been loosened. Hell no longer holds me captive. It is finished. I no longer have to fear the, the anger of God because all of his righteous wrath was satisfied on that cross. It is finished. The fear of wondering if I have done enough to enter into heaven has been wiped away because Jesus and Jesus alone finished my salvation. This declaration cried out by the Son of God and yet the, the Son of Man guarantees that through faith you have entrance into eternal life with him. This cry, it is finished. It spells out salvation for you. The heart of God is open to my cries of pardon because my Jesus paid the price for my salvation in full. And there isn't a day that goes by that I don't need to hear those words. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't need to sit back and simply marvel at the power of the cross and sing that victory alongside of Jesus. It is finished. The pain-filled punishment, the plan of salvation carried out. Everything that Jesus had come to do has now been accomplished. You're at peace because you stand forgiven at the foot of the cross of your Jesus. It is finished. Amen.
We join together to sing our next hymn.
We join together to pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Savior's seventh word from the cross. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. We sing our hymn.
As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and went away.